Hi everybody, I am sorry that I'm a little bit late this morning. Uh, significance of 18. Hi everybody, hi Sojanya, hi Fahima with Guruji. Pin comment, okay. I've become a pro at this spinning comment business. How are you guys doing? How is everybody's day going? Uh, hi, VJ. Nice to see you, VJ. You guys can't see you. It's good to see you. Uh, hey. Oh, you know what, guys? I should have my headphones on and let me. Is it very noisy with the air conditioning? Then maybe I should just put the air conditioning off. That might just be better. Okay. No air conditioning. Yeah, very intriguing topic. Very background is too bright. Should I move? Should I turn? Yeah, I feel bad for everybody who is. Okay, let's start. Okay, I feel like we're getting into a full production. <laughs> I am apologizing. I hope Guruji is not here waiting. But I'm going to get a chair here and sit. And I am going to have to lower this. One second, guys. You might be able to see my forehead, unfortunately, and not me. Okay, let's do this. I think this is good now. I think we've taken care of all problems. The sound, the brightness, all of it. Okay, let's see, has Guruji sent a request to join now? Hey, Rashi, hey, everybody. Hey. Okay, I think we're good. We're waiting for light is better now. I think it should be better. I think it should be good now. I can see like, I can see that this is good now. Yeah, hopefully it's perfect. Uh, that's what I hope. That's what it seems like. Uh, that it's perfect, and I've lowered down my stand as well. Hi Shen. Hi Krishna Ji. Namaste. Uh, Light check, sound check, uh, exactly. <laughs> I just feel bad that when I'm going to save this video, they are going to have to see all of this drama in the beginning. Can't wait to have this conversation with Guruji, and I've just added him back. He's, I've just added him in. Namaste, Guruji. Namaste, how are you? Good, Guruji. What a lovely background you have behind you. Yes, my boys are, you know, Working very well now. Wow. Is that they the Indimasi to... village? Is that the Indimasi village? This is Indimasi village, yes. Can't wait to come, Guruji. <laughs> they want to make me modern. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that you're allowing everybody, just like you said, that we have to play mischief with Mother Nature. You're allowing your team to play mischief with you. Yes. Uh, Guruji, I have to say that the minute I see you and hear your voice, it's just, I feel like all the worries of the world melt away. <laughs> I really do feel, you know, I've had a very busy week. I have moved, a lot of life changes. And I have been following everything that you were saying and, you know, understanding the right brain and the left brain and understanding the connection with the cosmos and the worldly duties. And it's really helped. But still, more than anything, when we just see your face, it just melts everything away. So pranam yes. and thank you Guruji for everything. Actually, again, I have to tell you that the chemical changes, I mean the hormones, which are being processed within your cell due to the stimulation. Like when you see me, your eyes will send some messages to your memory. When you hear something from me that Yes, we'll take that vibration to the memory and everything will be processed. Based on that process, your system is producing different types of hormones which will give you a feeling that, yes, I understand this way, I understand this way. See, in, Krishna, uh, in Bhagavada, have you heard about uh, Krishna's uh, you know, enemies? Which enemies? 
krishna even from his childhood he was being you know attacked he yeah. you know kamsa wanted to kill him yes oh yeah 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 tadaga another uh, you know demon wanted to kill him yes all the different uh, yeah yes but the purpose is i mean the message is krishna is the cosmic consciousness so everybody wanted to dissolve themselves into krishna but the method they adopted was entirely different i mean kamsa felt that he always he was meditating krishna the moment i see you i will kill you i will kill you so he was meditating on that that was his character his guna but akrura always thinking that krishna is my shelter so always he was following him as his master but arjuna uh, considered krishna as a good friend so like that everybody was trying to blend with krishna dissolve in krishna but their process were entirely different same way you have a unique process within your system based on your purva janma samskara i mean the past memories which you have already processed within based on that you feel that yes now guruji is talking this you understand the way you like or the way you are fixed in maybe other person will have different opinion different feeling so you can appreciate yourself that yes i am understanding or i am catching the message from guruji that means my inner system is matured enough qualified enough to grasp the real science behind spirituality okay guruji yeah truly blessed to to be in a position like that to be able to understand so everybody is trying to understand either fight with the universe like kamsa or understand learn from the universe like arjun yes. uh be yes. friend the universe or just say like i'll just surrender to the universe so which which strategy you're adopting makes a very big difference to the life you live that's true mm. okay yes. <laughs> did you have a good week guruji yes every day wonderful <laughs> i must tell you one uh, one thing before we start our topic is that uh, you gave us the idea last time that just hold the breath for the breath work just hold as long as you can without uh, you know don't get obsessed with the counting and i tried that this week and the retentions i just got lost looking at the third eye focusing inside and uh, i was able to disconnect myself from that counting and it, it was a different experience good as i yes Yes. when mind goes beyond certain limit because the energy source behind mind is prana that is what is said indriyana manonadha manonadastu maruda your organs are functioning because of the activation of mind and mind is activated by prana prana means our mm-hmm. breath mm-hmm. when we hold the breath mind will not get energy to run here and there mm-hmm. then the organs will subside in mind mm-hmm. when mind being controlled yoga chitta vritti nirodha you are arresting the functions of mind that means thought process is being arrested there we can understand the technology of the mind like a machine which is running very fast we don't know what is inside if you want to know what is the mechanism of the machine first switch off the machine so it will stop run then we can verify parts by parts this is that's, what's happening with our mind uh, <laughs> that's so smart do you say if i open a running machine i'm going to get an electrical shock but if i put yes. off the power source and i open it i can open it repair it fix it do whatever i need to do So you stop yes. that energy, that breath, and then you yes. then you then you explore it. Then yes. you explore the mana. This Got is it. what we do uh, in yoga. Is so when we hold the breath, mind will be arrested. Then we can go in the depth of the mind to find out from where mind is evolved. There, the light will come. Hmm. So, Guruji, I want to ask you one technical question. 
uh, and I asked Krishna Ji this, but I, for everybody who's listening as well. So Guru Ji, how much? So if I wake up in the morning, and the bread work should happen even before I drink my milk, right? I should be on an empty stomach. Yes, that is the best way. Keep the stomach empty, and do your own exercise, meditation, and asanas also you can do. After that, you have to wait, relax for ten, ten, fifteen minutes. That time you can have your uh, herbal tea or milk or according to your taste. Okay, Guruji. Okay, good. Okay, now let's talk about number eighteen. <laughs> yes. If you take the history of spiritual wisdom, history I meant written history. Earlier it was called Shruti. People were talking. They were conveying the message verbally. Right. Around as far as the studies are concerned, like eleven um, thousand years ago, it was started. recording so if you take that books each and every text you will come to know the significance of 18 is very much appreciated so first kavya first text is ramayana ramayana the war between rama and ravana it was for 18 days in mahabharata war was for 18 days and as i explained last time kalari poetry the tradition of everything or the origin of everything basically 18 steps then the puranas 18 puranas in sabarimala temple which is the symbol of real kundalini yoga that also having 18 steps and the bhagavad gita codified within 18 chapters so what does it mean everything is the symbol symbols of our own body sarvam khalyudam brahma this is what is said everything is brahma modern science is saying dynamically expanding universe exact translation brah brah means dynamically expanded mm. so this dynamically expanding universe is there that is the ultimate reality then in that reality who you are that is the question then i should ask myself who am i in this dynamically expanding universe so in that brahma i should feel that or i am feeling that i am a limited man but master said no you are micro and you are seeing the macro vyashti and samashti there is no difference between micro and macro now modern sense also explaining that our body if you take my body it is a colony of almost uh, approximately 120 billion cells and each cell is having its own individuality they can function as they are so in that sense the whole universe is a colony of living beings like this or like us here when i look inside i will come to know it is a combination of 18 dharmas or 18 techniques like the raw material of this production as a body is panja bhuta five basic elements bhumi jala agni vayu akash it is being used continuously it is used that is why we have to refill it eat food drink water and get heat and the air and sleep mm -hmm. these are the five ways we refill it mm -hmm. when these five molecules are touching each other mm -hmm. there will be a flow of electron i can say it's not exactly electron but mm -hmm. technically i can say mm -hmm. yes then there will be a flow of minute molecules mm -hmm. which is called bioelectricity panja prana 
So mm-hmm. Pancha Prana, five types of energies are developed within these five elements. So total ten. Mm-hmm. When these ten elements or the faculties function together, our five organs will be active. That is what is called Panjendriyas. Oh, so the, feeling is, yes. the feeling of this universe is there. So fifteen. In that fifteen, that uh, totality of my information is called mind, mana. In the mind, it's a collection of informations. Then there is a discriminative faculty which we call buddhi, intellect. So intellect is you know discriminating. This is solid. This is liquid. This is human. This is animal like that. Discriminative faculty. That is the seventeen. Then beyond the buddhi, aham, the feeling of I, I enjoy this world. That is what is called the eighteenth faculty, the sense of me and mine. So these eighteen faculties are making our system independent, and I feel that I am alive and I am living in this world. There the question will come. Oh, if I am living in this world, what is the difference between this outer world and the inner world? There, I should try to close the functions of all these seventeen faculties, one by one. When I overcome this, like Arjuna Vishada Yoga starts with Gita, or one by one, I have to overcome. Then, when I reach to the eighteenth one. there will be one reality remain that is the reality when i recognize that i am revealed or i am uh, what i can say like a final emancipation or revelation or moksha liberated yes so this is the significance of 18 if you go to our yapa temple understand that then overcome 18 steps take gita overcome 18 steps but all this information should come back to you then you should identify yourself with that teaching then you can uh, eliminate your limitations one by one and finally we will become eternally free yes. this is reminding me of the whole uh, samkhya You know the yes. Purusha and Prakriti, and then yes. it's yes. it's that journey that yes. you make. So yes. I want to summarize it because Guruji, some people who are listening are the Western audience as well, and I want to summarize this in English for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, that as a human being, what Guruji mm-hmm. you're saying is that how when we come, we are a part of the universe, and when we come into existence in this gross reality, yes. it starts with the combination of the five elements, which is. Yes. Water, fire, uh, air, and ether. Yeah. Yes. And when these five come together, right? Just the combination of these five brings a flow of life. Yes. That punch, that flow of life, that energy, that ability to experience life, that pancha prana is awakened. Yeah. Now that's yes. five plus five, ten. Ten. And after that ten, then your indriyas, you know, your gnan indriyas. the ability the faculty of your senses which are five senses yes. in number yes. they also are awakened because that's through this is through which we are going to experience the universe yes right so that's 15 after yes. that 15 to really be in this position there is going to be mana which is your mind mm-hmm. uh, buddhi is your intellect, intellect and ahankar is the sense of being of ego I- Yes. and when we get from the journey of coming from the cosmos to the journey of being and we are wrapped with these 18 18 different yes. things yes yeah that's how far we are we are 18 steps away from that reality mm-hmm. which we are yes. inside yes and to go back to experience that reality where we came mm-hmm. from we need to undo these 18 steps that's is what yes and that's the significance that when we are doing the 18 steps to go to a temple those are the 18 steps we are going to take 
so in all our practices that chitta vritti nirodha disconnecting from the indriyas or holding your manas in a steady place yes or yes. any ahankar destruct destroying practices or all of that is again for us to experience where we came from true that's all right good so now tell us how is it so we spoke about indriyas right guru ji we spoke about chitta vritti nirodha in the in one session now we we also spoke about pran you know holding the bread for the mind what so the real battle that happens guru ji in life is with the ahankar right yes and there's this constant bombardment of rights your right your right this is your right and there is all of this confusion that happens right so how does one address that that which comes up in terms of ahankar yes now because of this functions of 18 faculties process we are like in a whirlpool we lost ourselves in the whirlpool of the multitudes of thoughts and uh, sensory informations so we have to slowly start controlling our breath then the waves will start coming down it's exactly like you want to see what is inside uh, in the in the bottom of a lake but the lake is the outer layer is completely disturbed you should wait then the waves are subsided water gets you know uh, who uh, what's that um, the residues are uh, taken down then it water become clear then you will come to know yes what is inside the or under the uh, lake same way now you feel we are trapped into the thoughts and everything we are disturbed because it's like the uh, top layer of the lake our thoughts are disturbing a lot so slowly control the breath you will come to know the process of the thoughts will become under your control it's like again again like a horse if you want to uh, enjoy a horse riding the control should be within you you have to hold the rein properly and you should control the horse if the horse is mad it is taking you uh, the way it want and you are scared and you are nervous though you are sitting on top of the horse you are not enjoying the ride but if you are trained if you know how to control the horse you will have a fantastic ride life is like that how we should get see in bhagavad gita see the symbol there are five horses in a chariot and krishna is holding the reins and arjuna is sitting back who is arjuna i told you you know all gods and temples and um uh, textbooks grandas are representing our life it's only symbols not reality like now i will come back to this position or this point see now t- uh, today or yesterday was the ram uh, ram temple ritual was there in india okay i remember sorry our movie it today or to okay Yes, yeah, yesterday was there was a big function in India, in Ayodhya where Lord Rama was born. A temple uh, is going to be con- you know constructed. Many are thinking that it is a political achievement, it is a traditional achievement, it's a yogic achievement. Many are talking the way they experience the truth, as I told you in the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> But in reality, it is only a symbol, Ram and Rava. and uh, uh, sita was the uh, wife of rama and ravana abducted her he wanted to uh, get her by force then rama went to lanka and they fought each other for 18 days what does it mean ram is actually our soul soul is knowing everything it is the impression of cosmic soul but ravan is having 10 heads have you ever seen a guy who is having 10 heads the 10 heads are 
representing our 10 indriyas karma indriyas and jnana indriyas as i told you before the informations will be collected through the senses jnana indriya five senses then we have to react there are organs for reaction also that is what called karma indriyas this 10 organs are making this noise i won't get this i want to do this this is mine this i will fight with this person all these things are propagated or formulated through these 10 organs then sita is the mother nature mother nature is going through or it is blend with cosmic law that is rama but ravana say i will capture you our mind is saying this oh i want to construct a big house i have to buy this much big car so these are created by the ravan process but rama says hey don't worry whatever is meant for you will come to you so our inner self is our intuition is rama our intellect is uh, ravan so there is a constant fight between the intellect and intuition when for what for taking gita sorry sida so what we have to do it's only a symbol symbolized and a, a, a philosophy highly philosophical thought brought into um, mythology through using legends so here what we should do we should make a process of fighting with our limitations the uh, uh, what we can say running without a control like a horse which is running without a control our organs our indriyas are running take the reins give to krishna cosmic consciousness and aha the feeling of i is sitting back arjuna that is the symbol everything is symbolized like this so we should make a process understand the essence of all these teachings and make a program daily program for ourselves there we will come to ashtanga yoga these are all rituals and uh, um, occult practices spirituality philosophy many things are there but what is the use of learning all these things bring it into daily practice there we start ashtanga yoga yama niyama you have to take out all our negative thoughts whichever is possible kill it mercilessly if i have a habit of drinking a glass of wine every evening if i feel that oh that is not good for my yoga practice then i should avoid it that is yama then i should make some discipline uh, morning or evening i will find 30 minutes for my daily practice that is niyama then we have to practice some asanas then hold the breath there we are slowly diving back to the depth of our inner reality 18 years will be sufficient for a person to establish completely into spiritual horizon. 18 years. But Otherwise, mm -hmm. yeah. No, 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 you can't continue. Otherwise, there are many different techniques in India. You can awaken your Kundalini even within 18 days. Or you can awaken your Kundalini within 18 months or within 18 years. Like uh, different types of sadhanas, practices are there. Saumya sadhana, Tivra sadhana like that. So it depends on again the requirement and uh, the determination of the sadhana. Got it. Got it. I want to just summarize what you said, Guruji. Yeah. So my question to Guruji was, you know, again, kind of where do we begin when this ahankar comes? And then Guruji said, uh, I think what I heard from what you said is instead of saying, oh, ahankar, you know, instead of getting confused in different aspects, you start from yes. a path. And that yes. path, which is very easily well laid out, is the Ashtanga Yoga, which is the eight limbs of yoga. Yes. And in the eight limbs of yoga, the first one is Yama. Which means, and what Guruji is saying, instead of following, you know, you know what is not good for you. You know, we all know, like you said, if you're drinking a glass of wine or if you're doing something, you're getting upset. Once you know, once you've identified what's not good for you, 
to actually make the discipline to not do it yamas means not doing practices which you don't consider good for you yes. then the next is niyama which means inculcating that discipline the do's that you need to do to be where you want to be and you know like you said last time guru ji that our inner intelligence already knows what's good for us when i'm doing something yes. which is not good for me i already know it inside and what's good for me so using that inner intelligence focus on what is that discipline that you require to go on your path true and then we go to asana and pranayama because now we are training the physical aspect of the body to reroute that prana and reroute that energy in a way that you can connect with yourself deeper true and depending on the intensity with which we practice this journey how much of your yamas and niyamas which are both most essential in guru ji i have to say that this is a area all of us in our generation really really struggle with uh, uh -huh. is you know not being on the cell phone right that we all know how bad it is opposite of chitta vritti nirodha it's like chitta destruction uh, being on a cell phone all day long <laughs> but yeah those are so important to go on this path to accelerate the journey which could be 18 days 18 months 18 weeks 18 years but if somebody keeps on it systematically 18 years they would have made some big breakthrough in identifying who is that inner self 100% yes <laughs> okay guru ji yama 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 <laughs> <laughs> i am good at yama but i'm not good at yama better no need to fall into technical terms like yama niyama 18 steps and everything be honest with ourselves first recognize our limitations and appreciate our needs no need to be diplomatic with ourselves <laughs> be <laughs> be honest with ourselves then acknowledge the plus and minus then shut your door and sit alone in your privacy and make or do proper verifications and take your judgment you are in that closed room you are the victim you are the judge you are the attorney you are everything so face all these things end of the session definitely you will come to know what you have to stick on what you have to avoid then two categories will come okay certain things i have to hold up certain area i have to give up then you will you will come to know how strong you are to keep these things away you will take time nothing is ne permanently negative or positive in nature it's like day and night it will keep changing so when we recognize this one do simple techniques or go through simple disciplines spend 30 minutes a day that is more than enough 10 minutes you just hold the breath 5 minutes observe yourself unconditionally then slowly the inner levels or inner uh, dimensions of your mind will be revealed on by one there you will become really like a intoxicated it's it's a different type of intoxication the most powerful intoxicant you can use that means the pineal gland will be slightly activated so you start enjoying your loneliness 30 minutes a day enough keep on doing that you will come to know how powerful you are gradually and it you are not in a need of convincing others because you are convinced within the whole world may say that oh you are not doing well but you will be capable of smiling at that comment because you are internally happy if we are not internally happy like that even a small you know uh, allegation can put us down why we are disturbed because we are carried away with the external stimulations we are letting it happen within but if we do this one daily practice 
everything will come but nothing will go beyond certain limit it will be properly comfortably handled life is a proper handling not running away from that or blaming it great guruji so that practice of introspection on a yes. daily basis of taking yes. of taking stock of your life taking stock of all the things that you're doing and you said one of the useful ways to start doing that is when you when you come into that private space to hold your breath so you can quiet in that mind yes then observe the remaining noises yes. that are happening for 5 minutes yes. so now you've kind of quieted the child and then at that point to really be fair and honest with yourself with what your evaluation of your life and as we keep doing that every day automatically a path of what needs to be done clears up for us yes yes and yeah you know guruji and it's so funny you just said the word intoxicant intoxication because i have always said that oh my god this thing is intoxicating to me and i never understood but i actually felt like that when i have a very good session of breath work i felt like that and i'm like okay it sounds so terrible i'm saying oh i'm intoxicated it feels intoxicating but now i understand why it feels like that it genuinely feels like another state and it's because something in your system has awakened which puts you in a deeper state oh. like that and what you said is uh, is you know all of this technicality out there whether it's the yam niyam It is, it's it's not so difficult it's as simple as just starting with that basic introspection and allowing your path to clear up yeah yes so you are directly entering into uh, kundalini yoga many people may say that you know kundalini yoga is very serious and you should have lot of preparations no kundalini yoga is the best yoga and simple yoga which can be practiced in a daily basis that means we have a hidden potential just explore it that is what is exactly meant by kundalini yoga or ashtanga yoga right so there is there doesn't have to be a whole system or a technique it is just the active effort of quieting the mind working with the breath and observing our own reality yes that's all then see now the problems which are disturbing us will become insignificant you know why see like earlier when i was doing my boxing i used to have a uh, shoulder pain my left uh, hand was little weak and uh, once i had a dislocation also and uh, whom ever i approached my masters physiotherapists doctors they said once you get dislocation it is very difficult to reset otherwise we should go for surgery i was disturbed on that because i felt i was disabled and uh, i was keen to listen about an information uh, or a remedy of this dislocation i was searching for that but once i entered into this kind of life when i started looking towards my inner self one day i came to know the problem which i was suffering from many years it started fixing back because my mind was capable of dealing with the muscle there i started smiling with myself then slowly i started dealing with all my joints in my meditation when the prana gets under our control then the link between the body and mind is prana so we can make lot of more you know modifications in the body we will start playing with it then i started playing with all my joints a person who is coming to me with a cervical spondylitis first i ask him only one question are you capable of obeying my instructions no compromise if the person says yes then i will ask only for 90 days i slowly teach him how to hold the breath how to extend this area by uh, jalandhara bandhana i teach him as a medicine and whom you were i tried so far succeeded in that 
effort so like when we come to know nothing can make us weak or tired or unhappy then whom we will blame who can disturb us we will start appreciating our path so our problems are not solved our problems are vanished that's what is happening right right guru ji so how we can easily use our own direction of our prana every day we are using our prana to fight and engage in the world and plan in the world and we are wasting it everything outside but we yes. have the ability to reroute that prana disconnect from the world outside and bring it inside to explore and heal your own body yes and that See, is you what you teach yes why people are disturbed why people are unhappy because they have the guilty consciousness but they don't know because i am strong enough to get everything done but i am not recognizing that power so in my deep level in my deep of the depth of the heart i am unhappy because i am not using my own energy that is why i feel that i uh, know guilty consciousness when i feel that guilty consciousness consciousness in my depth of the heart i will start imposing or i will start blaming putting that guilty consciousness on others saying that only because of this person i am you know suffering because of this disease i am suffering everything is either being the reflection of my inner guilty consciousness when we do the real pranayama and go back to the real um, essence of our life that problem will be vanished because that guilty consciousness will be vanished as darkness will vanish when light comes this is what is exactly meant in light and mind we have certain darkness within and we feel that outside places are certain pockets are dark it's only our reflection when we lighten from within the outer darkness will vanish this is what is happening with the real sadhak we all as a human being are so scared of our painful feelings that we quickly want to find something outside we quickly say oh my god this is very painful let's just find another person to blame and yes. the real sadhana you of course do the reverse journey yes and to acknowledge every feeling to understand and to understand the light within you undo 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 yes Right, Guruji. Yes. Now I have a I have a practical. Uh, somebody has a question. They want to elaborate more on the process of sadhana. But I have a uh-huh. question before that, Guruji. And this is a practical problem that a few people have brought up. Now there are people who have asthma, and for them pranayam is hard. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. people who have uh, sinus infections that they're always blocked. and mm-hmm. some of those people have written to me that they are feeling very frustrated and trapped because they want to be on this magical journey but they can't do this so what should they do for that who said they can't do because of asthma so they wanted to know that if i have asthma this holding the breath is it going to be damaging for them <laughs> no it's possible it is possible they are not supposed to do the same way as a, uh, other person is doing they should verify themselves how much i can hold maybe 3 seconds enough but the same person will do the next day 4 seconds so let that person increase that duration then may sometime that as, uh, attack come is like asthma people will not be having you know attack always it will be like Ups and downs Acute, will be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When they feel comfort, yeah, when they feel comfortable, they can practice. When the attack comes, let them relax, or do in a mild way. So like that, they should make sure that see, mind is the real decision maker. If they decide that, yes, happened is happened. This is more than enough. Now I am not going to tolerate this nonsense anymore. If they decide. See, mind will manifest as the muscle. It will support. According to quantum, according to quantum physics, our mind, the subtle mind, 
is manifesting as the muscle 1024 times a second so 1024 times a second the energy is transforming itself into matter and matter is going back to energy level so when the matter go back to the energy level the blueprints the imprints are there about the problems and good and bad things which are happening in the matter level body level it will be taken back to mind if we apply pranayama over there we can restructure the memory when we do the restructure even the genetic memory can be restructured this is what was happened in traditional india and when i read about this i thought it's only an exaggeration but no i am practicing that it is possible so a disease is actually engraved the memory is engraved in the mind when we do this pranayama or holding the breath beyond certain limit the matter and mind will merge each other through the help of prana there if the mind is decided if it has a strong decision it can be engraved in the matter level then body cannot have that disease anymore got it and you are saying 1024 a thousand and 24 times 20. yes each second the ability second. Of, of that exchange from mind to matter and matter to mind that yeah. potential is there yes. in each second such unlimited potential so at some yes. point if you create it at the level of mind enough mm. it is going to it does not have a choice it is going to come to the level of matter because that's just yes. the law of of universe and that's what quantum physics that's the explanation that you create yes. enough in the mind it will it will run over to the matter My and turn. even somebody with asthma you said that they don't have to do they don't have to do such a long hold but when they're feeling okay you do what you can do even if it's 3 yes. seconds and then you bring mm. it to 4 and you bring it to 5 and as you keep training your mind and building your determination it's done see my uh, manager in my city clinic he came to me around 8 years ago for a job and uh, he was having that inhaler and i asked him by using this inhaler how you can work in a yoga center so it's a wrong message then he said that's my problem because from my age of 3 uh, or 4 he was suffering from this asthma and uh, when he came to me he was 32 then within 3 years that person came out from that problem completely now he completed 8 years with me and he's teaching yoga he is supporting me in ayurveda treatments and all those things he is one of my senior technicians in indimasi earlier is little dust used to come he used to sneeze and the asthma used to aggravate now when we construct a new building or we renovate something he is in charge for painting and all these things supervising so what's happening what i'm saying is when we keep doing this uh, retention slowly our instinct will be more activated then that person will get a tendency to eat you know food as medicine he will get more tendency to uh, go for uh, like ginger or garlic or some kind of things which will fight against the asthma so body will start guiding that this is what we should develop instinct when instinct is in action then nothing to worry about a disease because body will come to know how to deal with the situation right and you already you make it sound so lovely and it's so true that you know we break our lives into so many parts oh i have to heal from asthma oh i have to make money oh i have to fix this problem oh i have to do that but none of that to me now it seems that it's not like that everything is one journey and the journey is not of doing all of this outside but as you start fixing your mind inside automatically everything you do outside will automatically yes. become a flow so, yes. so even though you know somebody who's listening to this might might uh, might think that oh it's only through the pranayama that he got healed no but because he came in alignment with himself because yes. he awakened his inner intelligence just yes. very naturally everything that he started doing in his life 
were eating, drinking, walking, waking, sleeping, started healing him. Yes, of course. And then in three years, he was fine. Yes. So to really create a life, right, Guruji? So the goal is to really create that life and to start at that introspection level and the breath work that you said, to start at that level, which will gradually and naturally allow you to create a life of self-discovery, healing and growth. Only deliberate effort we have to do is, instead of searching for remedies in the outer world, focus more within. Try to find the remedy from within. Then the external world will complement that effort. But otherwise, the external world will complicate that effort. If I have even cancer, suppose I get a growth in my heart. An ordinary person, as an ordinary person, what I will do, I will search for the best cancer, uh, you know, doctor. As an oncologist, I will search for the best oncologist. That means the first step itself is a failure. I should not search for the remedy from outer world. If it, a lump is coming, first I should ask, hey, what's going on? I should love my body. I should attend my body. I should ask, why a malignancy is there? The, when mind become aware that disease is already 50% defeated, his mind is like a manager. If the manager is very vigilant in an office, nobody can play there. If the manager is drunk, drunk, drunken, and um, uh, he is careless, he is not responsible, what will happen? May all malpractices can happen in the office. Same way, the manager of the body is mind. If mind is very focused and sincere and attached, union between mind and body is called yoga. So mind should be attached with the muscle through the link of prana. When I attend that, body will report back to the mind that, yeah, there are some problems which is you know, triggering the uh, growth of the cell. Then I can go to an oncologist. Then I will ask him, doctor, I have this problem. So 50%, I know what to do. Then I am getting uh, an information or a, an, an advice from an experienced person. I am taking advice only, but decision I will take. Yes. If I don't know that much, I will totally depend on that person. That information can be right and can be wrong. There, I will lose my confidence because I am not there. But if, if I am practicing that pranayama every day, even cancer cell cannot go beyond limit. I will get the proper information and I will be capable of taking the right information from outside. Like a free animal in the forest. Animals are there, birds are there. Do you think that they are not having problems? They will also get diseases. But since they are more instinctive, they will come to know which uh, herb, is, herb can be used as the medicine. Like uh, uh, stray dogs, free cats, if you watch them carefully, sometimes in a year you can come to know cats will start eating grass. That time definitely that poor guy is having some problem and they will fast beyond certain limit. Whenever they get problem, they stop eating. Yeah. If they stop eating, another gland, certain glands will be activated and they will be attached with some kind of herbs. That means mother nature is guiding that poor animal through the medium of instinct and that animal will go and find the real medicine for its problem. So that instinct can be activated within us. If we succeed in that, we never cry about any issue in the world. Right. Right. Great, Guruji. So the whole battle that we experience today in life, everything we experience is only a result of moving away from ourselves. We have forgotten ourselves. Yes. And, you know, instead of the six senses we had, now we're only using five senses in the outside world and we've forgotten about that six senses. And the whole journey now, you say, is about saying, hey, shut up to the five. Sorry, I'm using the word shut up, but you're saying shut up to the five senses. 
sense within us as we awaken the sixth sense within us we already get answers so you know somebody is asking who oh, can you heal heal for take or can you heal for you says it's not it's not about one disease or the other disease it's not about that it's about constantly letting ourselves find the answers about going inside us and even that will guide us what can happen you know at some point right guruji this body is going to perish but we will have the knowledge and the intuition of when it is ready to perish when it is okay to perish when it is a natural is rather than being scared of the 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 being of the peril to just understand the natural flow and as we keep connecting to ourselves this is just life is going to become a river it's a flow oh yes that's that is what exactly we have to do since you mentioned about the sixth sense yes there is a sixth sense which we call third eye see like a like if you take blind people their ears will be very powerful they can recognize people by listening them if a person who cannot see and hear his smelling capacity will be enhanced in that way if we deliberately shut down five senses that is what is called yoga yoga is shutting down our senses one by one then a sixth sense will be activated from within that is what is called third eye then adindriya jnana when we get that you know capability or when you explore that capability you will come to know no nothing can stop you yes and unfortunately instagram is going to bump me off but i think guruji you've given us a great understanding and a fantastic starting point i hope anybody who listens to this can systematically take time out for that introspection and that breath work and uh, hold the reins of their mind so that they can explore the truth within yes hey, guruji that is amazing thank you so much guruji pranam from me from everybody who's listening now who's going to listen and uh, we will chat with you again and thank you for guiding us in our journey thank you thank you all pranam guruji we'll talk to you next wednesday Well, okay thank you, thank you.